Good day, everybody. Here we are on the Bible in a Year 2021, day 35. We're in Exodus 16 to 18 today. And um, yeah, like everything that we've been doing in Exodus, we're going to have to get right to this because it is, it really is, guys. It's a lot to try to fit in here in such a short period of time. And I, I know I'm skipping over uh, a bunch of things, I'm, but I, remember, I, I'm trying to highlight where the father moving his plan forward and what he reveals of himself more than what we really know about people. Sometimes I point things out, but I'm really trying to concentrate on, um, on, on father, who he is, and his agenda going forward. So we have here in... In Exodus 16, 2 to 3, and for us to understand a father's uh, response, or I, I should refer to Yahweh here, because uh, we don't really um, see him revealed as father until much later. Um, so right here, uh, in order for us to understand Yahweh's uh, response to Israel, we need to have at least a little bit of understanding of Israel. So in verse 2 to 3, we, we see what's going to become very common for them. And it must have been very um, tiring, fatiguing on both Moses. Um, I don't know if you can say if it's tiring, fatiguing on, on the Lord or not, but uh, um, let's just go forward on this. The, the whole Israelite community complained against Moses and Aaron in the desert. The whole community complained. Uh, the Israelites said to them, Oh, how we wish that the Lord had just put us to death. While we are still in the land of Egypt. There we could sit by the pots cooking meat and eat our fill of bread. Instead, you've brought us out into this desert to starve this whole assembly to death. Again, I know there are people who have that notion uh, that it's better to die free uh, than, than to live in um, in slavery, but this is all the, the people knew. And, and there were some things that they're reflecting on that they're thinking, well, we had it better there, forgetting everything that went along with it, forgetting the fact that they just went through a period where they had to work so hard, they had no time to think about anything else. And, and but what, you know, you know what it's like about food, right? Food has a big hold on us. And this is what they're looking at. Uh, they don't, they don't, they don't feel that they have a lot in place. But I, as we go forward and we, we see this complaints, un understand here, Yahweh is, is going to show them a lot of patience, a lot of a leeway. Um, I really think that they were suffering uh, beca because of, of uh, what they had gone through. Uh, there is a real poverty mentality problem um, that they could accept, you know, that, that little bit that their whole life was focused on cooking um, uh, meat and, and eating bread. Uh, that they had no higher expectations. So there's some real problems here. Uh, and the, 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 just thinking going forward, um, it, it's, it's, not, it's not the complaining uh, because, I, I, I mean, Yahweh understands our heart. He knows what they've been through. He knows what they're suffering. He knows their limitations. And so we see the patience. The problem comes when they're not willing to be healed, when they're not willing to move on from this, that they stay in this condition. You, you get that. They're fixed. They're, they're staying in this condition. Uh, Yahweh wants to bring them healing, make them a whole people, uh, make them a mighty nation. And, and they're stuck in this place of complaining over the little things. It's a poverty mentality uh, that is in place. They have to start seeing that Yahweh is the solution for them. Um, here we see the patients. You know, they're, they're complaining that it's better if, if we had just been killed in Egypt instead of coming out here. And verse four, then the Lord said to Moses, I'm, I'm going to make bread rain down from the sky for you. Uh, the people will go out each day and gather just enough for that day. In this way, I'll test them to see whether or not they follow my instruction. And that, that's a big thing because he's, he's bringing them on as his people. They, they need to follow his instruction. If they're going to be his people, they need to follow his instruction. So that's what he's really looking for here. And uh, any of you who have spent any time teaching, 
uh, you know it's it's very frustrating when clear instruction is given and, and people do what they feel like doing and they get it wrong and then you have to spend more time with them uh, to try to correct that and and because they got it wrong that's entrenched in their brain now and you have to help them untrench that and and get them to that proper place but if they had just followed the clear easy instructions to begin with you could have avoided all of this any of you who are parents can understand this instructions that are, are given to children but children decide to do it their own way and it usually means a bigger mess that has to be cleaned up but but so here Yahweh is is providing uh, with a great deal of patience but he's also testing to see whether they have at least the capacity uh, to become who he wants them to be then the Lord said to Moses oh yeah okay we I read it sorry <laughs> caught up there okay in exodus uh, 16 10 uh there's encouragement here uh they, 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 that's what the whole thing is here as aaron spoke to the whole israeli community they turned to look toward the desert and just then the glorious presence of the lord appeared in the cloud uh, and and a, again the presence is supposed to encourage us uh those of you who know the the story of uh, elijah um uh, you'll know that that um, when he went to the cave uh, and he was in hiding because he was so discouraged, uh, the, 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 the Lord had him stand in, in his presence uh, and that was supposed to encourage him. But when we're fixated on things, uh, it doesn't, that presence, we, we don't always sense it or if it's there, we just consider that our problem is, is even bigger uh, than that. And it should put everything in perspective. And, and so as they stood there and they saw the glorious presence of the Lord appear in the cloud, that was supposed to give them some encouragement and, and strength in, in what they're facing. Because this isn't easy. You know, all those people, over a million people living out in the desert, they have no farms. Uh, their, their, their cattle is not enough to keep them all fed. Um, so they, they even have to be concerned about, you know, how, how do they keep their, their flocks fed and, and looked after? So the, the instructions were the test. That's, that's how the, the Lord was, was testing them in this thing. Uh, they had to follow the instructions. So in Exodus 16, 16, this is what the Lord has commanded. Collect as much of it as, uh, they're talking about the manna here. Collect as much of it as each of you can eat. One omer per person. You may collect for the number of people in your household. Uh, also instruction is given about the, the Sabbath, that uh, nobody is to go out. The double will be given on, on the, the day before, and nobody's going to have to go out. And so, you know, we, we get this idea that, okay, things are not going to be uh, so smooth. Uh, Moses says, they, to, this is the instruction that's given. Don't keep any of it until morning. But do you understand that if you're in a poverty mentality, you always want to hold on for a little bit in case you need it for tomorrow. That, that's a poverty. That's small, that's small thinking. Uh, God has promised us that every day he will give to us what we need every day. He will give us daily our daily bread. Okay, this so this is you know this is what it's referring to our daily bread, the manna, daily bread, what we need every day. He's going to give it to us, so we don't have to carry over the stuff from yesterday in into into today, and and so this is the instruction here. Don't keep it any of it until morning. It's a trust factor. Do they trust the Lord that every day they're going to be able to go out and collect this? Um, but with a poverty mentality, you don't trust anybody. Then you trust in your own resources and you always hold on to, you always have that cash of supply. And people say, well, that, that's just prudent. That's just wise. Um, not if the Lord has instructed you otherwise. It isn't. If he's instructed you that, there are seasons that, that like with um, what happened in Egypt, with, uh, with, with Pharaoh and, and um, with Joseph. You know, they had all those years to set things aside for what was coming. So when he gives those specific instructions, yes, definitely do that. Our problem is we don't have conversation with him. We don't talk to him. We don't, um, we don't seek his heart. We don't, we don't look to what his thoughts are on these things. We just make our own decisions. And most of the time, uh, he just wants us to live uh, day by day, day by day. Don't worry about it. 
Don't worry about it. I know what you need. He says, don't chase after that stuff. I'll take care of that. So uh, they didn't listen to Moses, though. Come, some kept part of it until morning, but it became infested with worms and stank. And Moses got angry with them. <clears throat> notice, notice it was Moses got angry with them. Moses got angry with them uh, because the Lord knew uh, what he was dealing with. And, and Moses, not having been a slave, uh, does not really understand uh, these people. He do doesn't understand what they're going through at all. So uh, Exodus 16, 27, uh, they failed the test. Okay, here, they, they failed it. It's plain out. Um, they, they failed it in that case. They failed it on the Sabbath as well. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to, to, to gather bread, but they found nothing. It, it's, yeah, they couldn't on both in, in both things. Two, two instructions there. Well, there's a bunch, but, but, but two that were really important. Uh, don't hold it over till tomorrow and don't collect on the Sabbath. And they blew both of them. And again, that the idea of that poverty mentality uh, that uh, they had to hoard away. That's where you get hoarders from. Uh, they had to hoard it away uh, in case they needed it for a rainy day. Now, look at this. So can you, can you imagine uh, your diet being the same for 40 years? Exodus 16, 35. The Israelites ate manna for 40 years until they came to a livable land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. And, and when we get there, uh, hopefully we'll take notice that when they crossed over and they, their, their first meal, which was from the land, uh, the manna stopped. That was the last day for the manna. Um, so there are seasons when Father provides when, when we need what we need and uh, not necessarily what we want that, that, that we have to understand. Um, you know, he wants us to have life in abundance, but he does take us through things. It's, it's, he also wants us to be uh, free of illness. He wants us to, his, his desire is such, but, but um, because of this world, we'll go through things and, and, um, and things will be adjusted for a season. For a season, we may just have our daily bread and it may be daily bread. It may not be steak. It may not be this. It may not be that. And, and this, we, f we paint false pictures for some people some days like, oh yeah, it's always going to be meat and potatoes. It's not always meat and potatoes. And I don't think any of, of uh, God's servants uh, would turn around and say, oh yeah, I've always had meat and potatoes. Uh, there have been seasons when you've had to tighten the belt. You have it. You have what you need, but not necessarily uh, what you want for a period of time. It's not forever. It's for us. We go in and out of seasons all the time. And, and as Paul said, we have to learn how to be content. And our contentment is because uh, Jesus is all we need. He, he's everything. And, uh, and, and the reality is that we can do all things through him who, who gives us strength. That's... That's our reality. So Exodus 17, 2. This for me is just absolutely silly. With everything that they've experienced so far, with all the provision, with how they've been taken care of, there are things they need to start adjusting. I, I know that they've been through terrible, terrible stuff, but I also think they're stuck in a mentality. They are absolutely stuck in a mentality and they're not willing to leave it. They're not willing to make adjustments. And, and so we find yet again, the people argued with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why are you arguing with me? Why are you, why are you testing the Lord? Because the Lord said he would provide. So like, just wait, guys, wait for, for his provision. Wait, he, you listen, you're not going to go without. He's going to take care of you. Don't worry about it. So and Moses ends up calling out to, to God because like he, Moses is not... He's just like, ah, man, I've had it with this. Man, this is, this, this, don't come complaining to me. It's a, not about me. I'm, I'm just like, I, I'm just following what the boss is saying. It's so like, so, but you look at how patient again, yet again, how patient Yahweh is. And, and yeah, don't test the Lord, but here they are. And, and so he says to Moses, I'll be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb hit the rock. Water will come out of it and the people will be able to drink. Moses did 
so while Israel's elders watched. Isn't that something? I'll be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. So a messenger uh, was sent, an angel, for to, to mark the spot, to mark the place um, that God had set aside for this, for this miracle to happen. Uh, pretty awesome stuff. And Moses, in all of this, no matter how weird and wacky he gets, he does. He, he's kind of like Abraham. You know, he just does what God tells him to do. But the, the, the whole complaint that we read, it gets clarified here. It, it, and it's good because sometimes uh, I don't think we always get the full picture. But here it's, it's just clarified for us. He, he called the place uh, Massa and Meribah. Because the Israelites argued with and tested the Lord, asking, is the Lord really with us or not? Yeah, that's that expression of doubt. Is he good or not? Does he provide or not? Is he with us or not? You get to a certain stage in, in your walk where you stop asking those questions. I, I'm not saying that there aren't difficult seasons, but... Uh, you, you just get to that place. And, well, no matter what happens, Lord, even if I die in this, uh, I still trust you. I still love you. And, and you get to the place where, you, where there's no complaints coming from you. There's no, it's called maturity. And, and you get there and, and you just trust. You just trust because you've been through a, a lot. You've been through enough um, to know. And this is where the adjustment isn't being taken. They, they've seen these, they, they've seen the hand of God. They've seen his might. They've seen his provision. And yet they still question. Now, isn't this interesting? In Exodus 17, 8, uh, we, uh, there's a chance for, for Yahweh here to show um, who Israel is, who, who they are to him, who they are to him. He, he can easily just take care of the, the, uh, the Amalekites here. He can just take care of them, wipe them out. But he doesn't do that because he has to start preparing this nation for what they're going to face when they come into the promised land, because they're supposed to be his stick. They're supposed to be his rod, his sword as they come in. And they, ha they have to remove those five nations. They have to wipe them out. And, and uh, he's chosen to do it through them. He could have done it anyway, but he's chosen to do it through them for development, for trust, for them, for them to understand uh, who he is. And so he, he starts here and, uh, and we have um, Amalek came and fought with Israel at uh, Rephidim. Now, Amalek, um, th this is a, a nomadic tribe of raiders. So they'll come up many times, many times. We're going to see them in their interaction with Israel. And th now they're possibly uh, descended from, from Esau uh, because Esau had a son who had a son, uh, Amalek. You know, and the, these could be the Amalekites. Some say they're actually related to Ephraim. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Like, like, okay, but anyway, um, this, this is, this is um, where, where I see the, the connection here. And Esau, of course, was Jacob's brother. So the, this is relatives. A, a lot of the problems <laughs> that Israel has comes from the family. Okay, so and and the 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 Amalekites were were a pain to them um, for for many generations, uh, and and here we have the first mention of Joshua. Now, isn't this interesting? Uh, do you think God had some foreknowledge of what was going to happen with Moses? But He starts preparing Joshua. He starts preparing Joshua to be the general He's going to need to be when He comes into the Promised Land. And so, the, right here, Moses. Um, I, I'm sure that the God spoke to Moses and told him to choose Joshua. So Joshua was chosen, and Moses says to him, "Choose some men uh, for us and go fight with the Amalekite, with Amalekite, um, or Malik. Sorry." I'm <laughs> <laughs> Go fight with Amalek. Uh, tomorrow, I'll stand on top of the hill with the shepherd's rod of God in my hand. So Joshua now has this responsibility. He's the general. He's going to be heading up the, the army. And, and um, Moses' responsibility is going to be stand there as that, that spiritual support that, that he's going to need. Now, for me, this the lesson that comes out of this, absolutely fantastic, is the importance of community and, and teamwork, that we, we are meant, 
We are meant to live in community. We are meant to need people. We are meant for people to need us. We are meant to work together. Because you see this beautiful thing. You've got you've got Joshua out there leading the the army. Okay, he's out there. They're they're fighting. Um, and, and then you have Moses. And with Moses are, are those who are supporting Moses. So you've, you've got the support. You've got the people in the army, the soldiers who are fighting. You got uh, Joshua who's leading them because they need a leader. Uh, you have Moses who is a, the real the spiritual head of everything that's going on, uh, commander in chief, if you would, and those who support uh, Moses in his role. But Moses uh, hands grew tired because he was as long as he held up that staff, they were winning. So they took a stone and put it under Moses so that he could sit down on it. Aaron and Ur held up his hands, one on each side of him, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his army with the sword. The other thing that comes out of this is that um, if, <clears throat> if God had just given them that ability to go in and do that without Moses doing what he did, um, they, they would just think, well, we don't need God. We don't need him. We don't, we don't need Yahweh to do this. We, we can do this ourselves. Let's, let's make our own decisions here. And, and, um, and it was also to, to, again, reinforce the place of Moses. It was to re uh, reinforce the importance of him. So this is a, a teamwork thing that's going on uh, to, to let them understand how much they need Yahweh. And because they need Yahweh, they need Moses. But at the same time, he's, he's going to work through um, the, the army in this way. So um, <clears throat> listen to what's said here in verse 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this as a reminder on a scroll and read it to Joshua. And read it to Joshua. Write this as a reminder on a scroll and read it to Joshua. Preparation. Do you see the preparation? I will completely wipe out the memory of a Malik under the sky. The thing is, it didn't happen until King Hezekiah. They almost got wiped out at one point. Uh, but it didn't happen completely until King Hezekiah. That's a long time from this date. Uh, but he was letting them know. He wanted to encourage them. Uh, they're, they're not going to survive. Verses 15 to 16. Uh, the, this is this is our response. It needs to be our response. We need to remember this. This is a this is examples that have been set for us uh, by those that that God entered into relationship with, with with Abraham, with Isaac, with with Jacob, and now here we have with with Moses. Um, the response to God's goodness is worship. Always, the response to His goodness is worship. Moses built an altar there and called it, the Lord is my banner. He said, the power of the Lord's banner. The Lord is at war with Amalek in every generation. And, and they find that to be true. Um, yeah. So that's our response. Uh, just a couple of things out of, out of chapter 18. Um, because we, this is Jethro that, that, that's coming. And, and we see here, uh, Jethro really expresses uh, exactly what, what, why Yahweh has done all this, because he wants people to know him. And so we, we see this response after Moses has told his, his father-in-law everything that has transpired, everything that Yahweh has done. Jethro said, bless the Lord who rescued you from the Egyptians' power and from Pharaoh's power, who rescued the people from Egypt's oppressive power. Now I know, now I know that the Lord is greater than all. So now I know that Yahweh is greater than all the gods. Now I know that Yahweh is greater than all the gods because of what happened when the Egyptians plotted against them. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, exactly, that's exactly the whole purpose of everything they came through so that people would know that uh, there is no life in the gods that they were worshiping, that he is the one and only. And, and he, you know, no, nothing that he did was ever seen before. Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, the good advice that, that is given to Moses. Moses is wearing himself out 
And I just want to point out that Yahweh hasn't really dealt with the structure of governance because they're they're in a wartime mode. Okay, that structure is coming. The uh, that he's going to give the instruction on how everything is set up. Uh, people don't realize it, but he really set, set up um, uh, four um, departments, if you want, of of power. Uh, he, he is going to set up, uh, first of all, you've got the, the high priest, and then you've got the, the high judge. Uh, you've got the king, but you'll also have the office of the, the prophet. And, and they're supposed to balance each other, support each other, and balance each other, and keep each other accountable as well. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, Moses needs something here. So you get this. Moses' father-in-law said to him, what you are doing isn't good because all the people would stand around Moses all day uh, trying to present their case and, and asking him for, um, you know, his judgment on this thing. Uh, what you are doing isn't good. You will end up totally wearing yourself out, both you and these people who are with you. The work is too difficult for you. You can't do it alone. Oh, man, we need to hear that. We need to hear that because he's placed us in community where we don't need to do things alone. Often, and listen, I talk to the man in the mirror. Often we, uh, we don't ask people for help. Often we think that uh, we need to do all this ourselves, And we carry burdens that we don't need to carry that are going to destroy us and wear us out. And um, it's, it's almost like a, a, a messiah complex where we feel that we're the only ones who can do this. We're the only ones who can rescue and uh, I've lived it through so many times. I've, I've had a number of burnouts, all my own fault, because um, I wasn't willing to turn and ask other people because I just felt like, oh, yeah, like I'm pouring out my life for God. And this is this is this is, you know, and no, I, I, I was trying to do stuff myself. I don't know what I was trying to earn with God, but no, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You, you can't do it alone. So keep that in mind if you're one of those people. In Exodus uh, 18.23, um, as Jethro gives this advice, he still defers to the Lord. He says, if you do this and God directs you, if you do this and God directs you, he defers to the Lord. He says, this is a good idea. Um, if, if this is what the Lord directs you in, hey, that's great. In the, if you do this and the creator directs you, then you will be able to endure and all these people will be able to go back to their homes much happier. Yeah, that's a lot. I unloaded a lot on you again today, uh, but we are establishing Israel here. And, and it is good for you to understand uh, why um, some decisions end up being made the way they're made down the road. Um, because the people aren't willing to change. So you guys have a blessed and great day. Keep your eyes out for the Lord, what he's doing around you. Uh, keep your ears open um, to hear his voice. And uh, you just be blessed. Thank you for joining me on the journey. And we will talk to you tomorrow.